When I decided to run for supervisor, I was the joke candidate, right? Because it was just like, oh, it's just this drag queen who's going to run. But my platform was housing and housing rights, mm. um, safe use sites, which I'm currently working on with Laura Thomas from the Drug Policy Alliance. And yeah. it's where um, people who use injection drugs have a clean, accepting, safe space to come and use their drugs. Okay, yeah. And um, that way you keep needles off the street, you reduce crime, you bring people back into community, and um, you know, and you stop criminalizing people because the war on drugs that was started with Nixon is a complete failure. And mm. there's countries like Portugal, which have decriminalized all their drugs, and have seen and focused more on truth and education and um, their drug population has gone way down they have a lot more money to spend on infrastructure because they haven't um, put the entire black and brown population of males into jail yeah. you know and then another thing that I just learned is mm. um, when you go to jail right you lose your voting rights for drugs even small possession okay because okay? yeah. it's a federal crime didn't and so idea. when you look at what happens is uh, in the southern states, in Florida, for example, when Bush and Gore were running against each other, mm. there's something like 22,000 um, African-American men who could not vote in that election, and women, of course, but it's mostly men of color who are arrested. And so if those 2,200 votes, if even like... 70% of them, and usually it's something like 80% of um, black vote goes Democratic, we would not have had the $500, 500 vote win. And it's all because really? of the war on drugs. Wow. And it's the new Jim Crow, which is the book you should all read. Wow, so you're, so you're saying that the war on drugs, as everything else is, is, is a ploy for politicians to, to nudge votes in different directions to, their, to their advantage. And another way they do it is by moving the arrested people to a different population area. So one, so one thing that you definitely have seen that's changed in San Francisco is because we've lost the cohesion, because we're so accepted that we've lost our own culture, we've lost something. I, mean, I don't think we're it? accepted. I think we're homogenized, is what I'm going to say. <laughs> well, you know, the yeah. thing about gay people is that yeah. I, I feel like we've been seeking that kind of approval. So now we can go into the military and we can get married because that makes us more like straight people. And therefore, we prove that we're so similar that we deserve rights. Like, I just don't get it. Like, what about all the times that came before where we had a rich culture and history that didn't involve marriage and didn't involve fitting in and didn't involve being normal so that people would like us. Like, who cares if people like you? People still don't like me. I don't care. You know, whatever. I don't need their approval. Right?